The iPhone 15 Pros are here, and here's everything you need to know if you're debating between purchasing the iPhone 15 versus the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Because on paper, both are actually really similar. Benefits of going with the Max versus the standard 6.1 inch display iPhone 15 Pro. I'm gonna go ahead and draw it out for you right here because there's actually some cons I wanna highlight about the Pro Max. Why the 15 Pro might be a better phone for you and vice versa. So getting straight to the point, the action button is available on both of these devices. And the functionality is extremely simple. The action button is actually responsive to a long press, which means there's no support for a double press, a single tap, just a long press. This is a good way to prevent yourself from accidentally toggling the wrong thing. And it's pretty customizable too, because on the action button settings, you have a simple menu that allows you to navigate between having the capability to mute your device, take a photo, flashlight, or even create Siri custom shortcuts, which will allow you to basically do anything. Now this year, for both 15 Pros, we did receive two unique color choices to choose from, titanium blue and natural titanium, but you still have the standard white as well as the black color choice to choose from. And if you notice, there's no gold color this year for the Pro lineup, but I do have good news. This is grade three titanium, which means it's lighter and stronger than ever before because Apple is claiming this to be stronger and more durable than the standard stainless steel. With this titanium body, it's actually 10% lighter from the previous generation stainless steel's iPhone 15s. It will definitely be noticeable on the Pro Max. And then with this brush finish on the edges, this is less prone to easily be acceptable for fingerprints. Now a feature that Apple didn't really talk about or really mention anything, but the vessels are indeed 50% thinner than ever before. Now internal goodies, both the 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max are both featuring the same RAM upgrade because now it actually has eight gigabytes of internal RAM, which is more RAM than some modern day computers, which is surprising. So I went from the previous six to eight gigabytes of RAM. And then that new U2 chip for precision finding is available on both the 15 iPhones. And the pros with this is this will allow your iPhone to communicate better with your Apple Watch. So you can actually allow it to use precision finding to find your Apple devices and vice versa. And this also allows the iPhone 15s to be ready for the next generation Apple AirTags second gen, which is rumored to be double the range. Now Thread Protocol is supported on the iPhone 15s, which is the standard protocol for wireless smart home integrations. Inside, both the Pros actually got a bump in battery life. And then the roadside assistant is available on the 15s, of course. This also includes the iPhone 14 lineup. But an interesting fact is the iPhone 15s are actually cheaper outside the US. An example, the iPhone 15 Pros has a starting price of a thousand pounds where previously the iPhone 14 Pros had a starting price of 110 pounds. So they went down everything except for the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So that's a little con right there. Now with the quick summary of the new A17 Pro chipset, this is more powerful than ever before. It's about 40% quicker and powerful in overall performance and efficiency. It's actually one of the few processors that actually is allowing AAA title games to actually make their way and actually play off the hardware of the iPhone 15s. And this is all thanks to the new three nanometer processing chip that Apple has developed, which is one of the first for any smartphones. And spec to spec between the Pro Max and the 15 Pro, they're just the same. It's the same processor found on both of them. So both of these two machines will take full advantage of everything, including AAA title gaming. But now let's talk about the Periscope lens that we're supposed to have. Unfortunately, it's only five times zoom versus what the competition has, like the Samsung, like what Samsung is using. They're able to go up to 10 times zoom, but the Ultra can go up to 25 digital zoom, which is not really usable footage, in my opinion, that close. But Apple is advertising that the 15 Pro Max, when it comes to shooting video, is supposed to be super stable than ever before. The standard storage option for the 15 Pro Max starts at 256 gigabytes, which definitely does give you a lot of freedom, especially now that USB-C is standard on all iPhones that actually has USB 3.0. So you'll definitely be able to take advantage of the 10 gigabytes per second transfer speeds. Unfortunately, the USB-C cable that's included on the iPhone 15 Pros is a USB 2.0 cable, which means you're gonna have to buy this cable separately. I recommend going with third party because the official one from Apple is pretty expensive. Both the 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max receive 
anti-glare coating on their main camera sensors. And the 15 Pros are the two that are actually advertised to be virtual reality ready for Apple Vision, which means all the footage captured between these two sensors will be able to be relived in Apple's Vision. During the keynote, images that were captured from the 15 Pros were actually crispier and sharp than ever before. This is due to the fact that these images are automatically converted to 24 megapixel images where previously it was just 12 megapixel bin. Now this one isn't exclusive to the 15 Pros, but I still feel like I should mention it, is the iPhone 14 Pros and the 15 Pros both receive a new software update because now they'll both be able to capture photos in HEF which will allow you to actually utilize the full 48 megapixel camera without having to take a photo in RAW. And speaking of more professional grading capabilities, the 15 Pros will be able to record log recording, which will give you more freedom to actually grade and correct colors. Yes, this will take more storage, but thanks to USB 3, USB-C, you'll be able to actually connect an external storage source to the iPhone, which will allow the phone to actually record at 40 at 60 FPS without filling up the internal storage on your iPhone. Then of course, we also receive more camera improvements like automatic portrait shot and a new improved HDR5. Now both the iPhone 15s will have Wi-Fi 6 so you'll be able to take advantage of the 2.4 gigabit per second speeds. Just however, you do need to bump up your router because really taking full advantage of this, you need to have a fast internet provider as well as a Wi-Fi setup with a router that can do Wi-Fi 6. Now in the US, there is no physical slot on all iPhone 15, so just like the iPhone 14 Pros for the SIM cards, just like the iPhone 14s, the 15s don't have a physical slot outside the US, you can't find them with it. But other than that, when it comes to the iPhone 15 Pro and the iPhone 15 Pro Max, again, the only advantage is the new 5x zoom capability, but even so, that's so limited compared to what other smartphone competitors are capable of doing 10 times zoom on standard. And yes, even though you do have a 25 times zoom digital zoom, that footage realistically is not usable as it's just too much zoom. So even though the stabilization hardware has been improved, in my opinion, the action mode that we've seen on the iPhone 14 Pros was actually really impressive. So I'm pretty sure that the iPhone 15 Pro action mode is enough to compensate to the new stabilization that's found on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So really that's the only advantage I could see in terms of hardware. Everything else is standard. What we've seen in the past was the iPhone 14 Pros and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. You're just really taking advantage of that large display. So if it fits comfortably in your pocket, go with the iPhone 15 Pro Max. The new camera hardware, that's just a nice little goodie, but nothing too crazy to the point where it makes somebody like you and I, who's always been comfortable with the 6.1 inch display, to make that aggressive transition to the 6.7 inch. So let me know in the comment section, which route are you going for? Hopefully this video helped you out in understanding how similar these two iPhones are to one another and what the big selling point can actually mean to you because everybody's lifestyle is different. If you'd like to see a general comparison between the Series 9 and the Apple Watch Ultra 2, check out that video right over there. Thanks so much for watching.